So I've come across uh, disturbing reports, and um, I was going to discuss the issue of crime specifically, but there's another facet to this, another aspect I think I can expand a little bit, and that is this idea that we just automatically need to respect different opinions. Um, now I'm going somewhere with this. A while back, I was in a discussion on a forum, a pretty heated discussion about penal abolition. The idea that prison um, doesn't work and it should just be abolished, period. Now, this is something I have commented on before, uh, I mean, spoken on before in, in my videos. Um, I think it's an insane idea. I think it's stupid, it's reckless and it's wrong. You know, I don't beat around the bush about that. I, the idea that you abolish prison is, to me, utterly insane. Um, I do understand arguments about penal reform, particularly in this country. Our penal system is definitely under huge pressure. And I understand the argument about prison being a school for crime. But I believe penal abolitionists and they're very, they're rarely honest about it. You know, they rarely concede that that really is their position because they'll kind of start off talking about prison being a bad idea and then they'll kind of show the true colours and then they'll say, oh, but I do believe in justice. And no, if, if you think that a violent person shouldn't go to jail, you don't believe in justice. I think that's just a very disingenuous thing to 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 suggest that if you are against the idea of prison for the most serious crimes that you are somehow in favor of justice it's an oxymoron it's it's just nonsensical so anyway um there was a guy on the thread who, who was of this persuasion. He felt that prison should be abolished. And I must admit, I had to kind of retreat from the thread because I, I, to be completely candid, I didn't trust myself to say something that I might regret to lose my temper and to come out with rather colourful language. And I never threaten anyone or anything like that. So I'm not, I would never do that. But... That's an opinion I have no respect for. Now, just to tie in with this, I've just read a report that um, the former British ambassador to the United States, Sir Christopher Meyer, was a victim of a vicious attack in London. And I'm just going to read out a few lines from the BBC report. Um, an ex-British ambassador to the US Sir Christopher Meyer is in hospital after being attacked at an underground station in London. His wife, Lady Catherine Meyer, said he was changing tube lines at Victoria Station on Wednesday afternoon when he was set upon. She said he may have a broken nose and his eye was swollen like a balloon. Police said two teenagers had been arrested on suspicion of assault occasion and grievous bodily harm. A 16-year-old boy from Hillingdon and a 15-year-old girl from Croydon have been released under investigation while inquiries continue. Describing her husband's condition, Lady Meyer said he is not allowed to eat or drink. And it continues, he's a strong lad and his spirits are not bad. He has a patch over his left eye which has thankfully stopped bleeding. He is waiting to hear whether or not he would be operated on for injuries to his hands and face. Now the picture that um, has been released um, that was supported by his family because they want to send out the message of what is going on here. Um, it's horrifying. It, he's not recognisable at all. If you see a picture of what Sir Christopher Meyer looks like, the picture, he's not recognisable because he, he's lying on the hospital bed and there's blood streaming down his face. I'm just looking at it now, I feel sick. Uh, um, his eyes are closed. It's horrible. Now, this matters not because of this man's status, not because he's an ex-diplomat. 
this would be of equal importance if this was an, a regular person. But it does remind us of just how depraved some of the thugs in this country are. And it might well have been a mugging, I don't know. An attempted mugging, but I I think anyone who is prepared to use that sort of violence against a total stranger is a dangerous individual. Now, if they're doing that at the ages of 15 and 16, what, what are they capable of later on? So when people advocate that prison be abolished, they're not saying we should jail fewer people. They're advocating prison be abolished. And I want to throw reports like this at their face. I want to say, how the hell can you say that criminals like this shouldn't be behind bars? So what I'm driving at with this is that the idea that we respect different opinions, I think is a little bit phony. I understand that it comes from a place of wanting civility. And I'm not for a second suggesting that whenever we have a different point of view, we get into a fiery, heated debate. Not at all. I think it is possible to have an amicable difference of opinion and to exchange views politely. But if you feel so strong about something, I think it is disingenuous. I think it's phony to say you respect the other person's point of view. So someone who says that they support penal abolition, I don't respect that view. I believe that amounts to enabling criminals. I believe it's insane. I believe it's quasi-anarchist. I can't get my head around how they think it's a good idea. Um, I can understand them saying that you know, you have high rates of reoffending and so on, so there needs to be reforms in prison. I do understand that. Penal abolition, it's insane. So, it, it's scary to think that there are people out there who are prepared to attack total strangers for nothing. Particularly in London. And the fact is, under Mayor Khan's watch, London has got worse. Um, there's no escaping it. And that's, I don't think it's fair to blame Sadiq Khan alone. But it has happened on his watch. I think police cuts are also partly to blame. I think there's a range of factors. That's, uh, that's what's happening. Um, so what do we do? I think we need to end the culture of permissiveness. Now, what, what do I mean by that? Most people are not happy about crime. You know, most members of the public, most politicians, most most people, if they're normal people, will feel a degree of anger or unease about it. If you cannot be, if you cannot have any emotional reaction to the photograph that I'm looking at right now, there's something wrong with you. But anyway, um, yeah, most people don't like crime. That goes without saying. But I do think that we ha we've we become almost desensitised to it. Because violent crime does that. It desensitises people. So um, newspapers, especially the tabloids, can show the worst sort of cases. Um, and people will be infuriated by it, understandably. But it happens so much that people start to become... Well, this is normal life now, because it is. So what I mean by permissiveness is this idea that we tolerate crime. And I believe that those who advocate for leniency and those who advocate for penal abolition are essentially saying society must tolerate criminals. I want to see a situation where criminals like this are frightened of the law. And at the moment, they're not. They're just not. And I think part of the issue there is in sentencing. This is an aspect that few things work people up as much as um, disproportionate sentencing. That is when you get a particularly heinous case and some weak, pathetic judge 
passes a sentence that just doesn't match the gravity of the crime. Now, the, these thugs are probably going to get a few years. And then it'll probably be, they'll be out before their time is up. I think that is repugnant. And, you know, people will say, oh, but judges can only work with what legislators give them. But the point there is very often they don't use, uh, they don't use a full remit of their powers. So let's say, for example, you have a particular crime and the recommendations from a common select committee, for example, a sentencing committee is, I don't know, 10 years, 15 years. You will get judges who will give them seven years. So I don't buy this claim that judges have no influence on how sentencing is passed and that they're just the, the middlemen, the middle women. No, they're in a position of enormous power. And in my opinion, judges who will not pass justice need to be held to account. They should not be motivated by, oh, I'm reluctant to send someone to jail because prisons are overcrowded. That's not their job. Their job is to enact justice. In terms of the prison overcrowding situation, I believe they approach build more prisons. That eases press, pressure on uh, staff. It eases pressure on men, inmates. Yes, it would be costly. But I believe it would reduce reoffending because you would have less pressures on the inside. The cause, the circumstances for the school of education. So, a uh, school of crime. I think it's an idea that should be seriously, seriously considered. Build more prisons. Ease the pressure on the system. Yes, it would be costly, but we are a lot more expensive dealing with reoffending. And yes, you will get, you know, you'll get people wherever the new prisons are built, living near them, who will protest. But it has to be a utilitarian question. Personally, I'd have no problem living near a prison so long as it was secure. I wouldn't because I believe violent dangerous people should society has a right to be protected from them it's as simple as that and i can't get my head around people who think that child killers um violent rapists arsonists terrorists you know these heinous destructive crimes gang members who set on innocent people for no reason racist thugs who lay into people because of a different colour of skin. Crimes like that make my blood boil, and I cannot understand the mentality of someone who, with a straight face, would say, that, oh, well, they shouldn't go to prison, let's, uh, let's try to understand them. You're deluded, if that's your position. So, on the issue of respecting different points of view, no, if you feel so strongly about something, the notion of respecting that point of view or the, uh, the opposite point of view is, it's absurd and it's dishonest. We should all have uh, self-control to not get so angry where we, you know, totally lose control. But anger is an honest expression sometimes of conviction. And this idea that I think there is something to be said for civility and debate. but particularly among politicians, because they're representatives of the people. But I also think there needs to be sincerity, and sometimes that means raw anger. It means saying to the other person, no, you're wrong, and I don't respect your opinion. It's not pleasant. No one wants to get into a fiery row, and there's times we need to walk away and say, okay, we're not, they're not going to see my point of view, I'm not going to see their point of view. So I hope I've given people something to think about. Um, I mean, you well, might well strongly disagree with what I've said. And you might think I'm uh, a blowhard, a hard line. I don't think I am. I think what I'm saying is absolutely reasonable. That's my point. Um, people have strong views. I just cannot look at that image, and I'll put a link to this report, and accept the idea that society tolerates it. We need a situation where thugs fear justice. And I don't think that 
is the case right now. 